nach 100 Metern die Querstraße ist ihr Ziel. Alright. Come on close. Yeah. Hi there. Well guys, I don't really have a plan for this video, to be to be honest. I don't know. Maybe no, maybe that's because of January 2021. Nobody knows what to come. I don't know. But I was thinking about a new video and you know, for quite a while and honestly and actually I already did an approach to do a video <laughs> drove south of Hanover and now driving wanted to show you something really interesting so a robber cave sorry guys but I don't know. The rest of Germany had the exact same idea on that very day. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that was really the first time I had to retreat from a site. So, I never do that normally. Never did that before. No, all right. Let's see what happens here. Well, you know. As soon as cameras rolling, everything could happen. Anyway, anyway, so we have a new year. Hope you all had a great new year, New Year's time, and hope it's going to be a really good year for you, for all of you. Let's hope for all of us. Let's see what's coming up. I don't know. Depends on the individual situation, but hmm, for humanity, I, I don't know. I don't think it could get much worse. Worse could couldn't. I don't know. Let's see what happens uh, about the virus and all that we're facing right now. Anyway, this is about pipe tobacco. We don't want to complain. So, all right. I was searching for, for a different spot. I thought, yeah, well, go there. There's a monastery, and well, I don't know, robber cave, that, that seems to be something that people want to go with their families, uh, but monastery, well, I don't know. So, and I'm not alone, uh, so actually we are four, but we are not, we are not the four apocalyptic riders or something like that, we are, I don't know, so I'm not a friar, but there are three friars, three friars with me. I guess you already uh, saw that in the title of the video, because I don't know, at this point I don't know exactly what the title of the video is gonna be, but um, I guess that would be three friars 
Well, that's even hard to spell for me. Three nuns was actually much easier. So there's a video on the channel of three months, uh, nuns in a monastery. Three nuns in a monastery. So, and yeah, I thought, well, with all the gender thing and so on, why not, why not talking about uh, doing, doing that the other way around, uh, three uh, friars in a monastery. So, and that's actually a, a monastery here, so you heard, heard that. Uh, so, this monastery, well, is most of the monastery here in this area, they, they go back for quite a while. So, and this monastery goes back in the 12th century, so I think 1148 uh, that was founded here. So, yeah, that's nearly uh, 900 years ago. Mm. And there were reasons for that. So, an earl, the Earl of the Shire, uh, yeah, responsible for, for everything that's going on here regarding those uh, monasteries and uh, church business and so on. So, he wanted to, to have a monastery here, so, um, yeah, for several reasons. So. Uh, a safe spot just to stop by and uh, yeah overnight and so on and uh, probably for his family to bury uh, and maybe even uh, to to store somebody there in the monastery not sure about that so and actually uh, so first news that we have about the friars themselves here in the monastery that would be a hundred years later so a hundred years later, we know about seven friars, but sorry guys, I don't. I just have the, these three friars. Uh, but don't be disappointed. So uh, uh, those those are good uh, good friars. So when we hear about uh, three friars, and that's done by Cornell and Deal in this case, I think we we immediately have some kind of feeling that that might be connected to, to the three nuns. And it's probably not a coincidence uh, that the company named that uh, three friars. But if you expect something that could be near to that, or could be a copy, or even similar to that, you're going to be disappointed if you, if you buy that, if you go for that. But, so these well, we know nuns and friars, they're different. So, and that's the case here. So, uh, it's a good tobacco. And I guess we should just, um, we should just think about the tobacco as a tobacco for its own. So, it's just about these three friars. And perhaps we should think about these, uh, three components. So this is Burley, uh, Virginia and Perique. And so if we talk about three nuns, so this tobacco, three nuns, is actually very different uh, to, uh, to this three friars tobacco. Oh well, the more friars coming. People with dogs. That's something you always find during the lockdown. Well, you know, we're in a lockdown, hard to find any places to go, to walk your dog. I don't know if a monastery is the right place, but anyway, we're gonna find that out. That's a friendly dog. Unfortunately, I don't have a dog tobacco. Uh, I don't know, is there any tobacco uh, related to dogs? Anyway, just got distracted by that. Um, yeah, so these three components, if we talk Burley, Virginia and Perique, so you might gonna get the idea that could be close to a three nuns, but it is not. Uh, and I, I gave it another shot uh, today in the morning and, and tried out what may be different uh, and, and what may be similar and so on. And I think the three nuns is really so one thing is, it is really more about the Perique. So Perique is more in front, it's more dominant. And the other thing is that 
uh, at least the classical red uh, uh, the red version of Three Nuns and the green version, the new version, um, the Kentucky also dominates much more um, than the other components, perhaps even. But if you're really interested in Three Nuns and the different components of Three Nuns, um, there's a video on the channel that might be interesting for you uh, that is uh, called, I think, uh, Three Times Three Nuns. So that may be something for you. And now I was talking about these different uh, versions of three nuns. And when we talk about the yellow three nuns, so one of the new three nuns tobaccos, this is mainly about a Virginia old one. That's a straight Virginia. And they even did it completely different. So these are roll flakes and are done by McBaron now. So was former done by, by Orlick and before that by British American Tobacco and so on. But you can see all that in the video if you're interested in that. So, but this is a different animal. So we're talking about, yeah, somebody wrote in a review and I think that's really proper to say that. You, perhaps you could even say, this is a burly based vapor. So that may sound strange, burly based vapor. So vapor is a Virginia Perique uh, mixture, we know that. Well, how can that be a burly based vapor? And I think that, that, that pretty much uh, fits to the tobacco burly based vapor. So if you smoke that, the burly really comes through very nicely. Uh, with, I think even some chocolate notes, but it's at least a bit nutty, roasty. You can feel the earth coming from uh, parts of the Virginia. A little citrus uh, note perhaps in the back. A uh, little hay note, but it's not disturbing in any way. And the Perique is just there to underline the other components. So it's never in front. It never gives you a shot or bites you. Talking about bitiness, so this tobacco isn't bitey at all. Just be careful that you don't go too hard on the tobacco and you're gonna be all right then. Damn. There's some slightly rain coming down. Coming down, coming down. I can see that on the camera. Hope you can even see me now. Let's push this forward. All right, so, oh, you already showed you that. So that's not the original tin, of course, that's a jar. So I jarred it up. And what they say is just, it's a combination of Virginia ribbon, brown burley and perique. Three fryers delights with a combination of natural, piquant sweetness and spice. Not too sure about the spiciness, but anyway, getting a closer look to that. Can you see that? Yeah, well, it's a ribbon. But there's something interesting if you open that and you and you just take it with. I don't know. Some guys uh, wrote that is really this is really bad, but <laughs> I guess that's just because they're not used to to the sour note of the Perique. Uh, so that's really some kind of in front. So I had this jar in there for I think four or five years and jarred that up. And um, that's a Cornell and deal. So I don't know. I suggest if you if you go for that, put it in store. Not for five or, or six years or whatever. So but just I don't know, 12 months would be good. We all know that Cornell, Cornell and Deal, they like to pack very fresh, which is not really a complaint, but um, it's always a good idea to have that in stock or a little bit down the cellar and then go for that. I think I'm gonna, gonna change uh, the side. I don't know. Let's see if we find something, some shelter place. Let's go. Now doing that, I could tell you one or two things about the things you see. So right in front, you see that? That's the house of the abbot. So it goes back uh, probably to the late Middle Ages. Well, would be nice to, to live there. There's a small village here, village of Shinna. The village of Shinna. Yeah, found by a handful of monks. So, 
not the village itself of course but this more monastery and look around yeah several buildings just for for the monks and uh, yeah some of their animals so let's take a look around hope camera can stand that all right So, that, that's uh, the smithy. Yeah. I don't know. Just working on some, some minor metal part, iron, iron stuff. So what they really need for, yeah, the agriculture and so on. So look at that, perhaps we may find their shelter place. So over there, that's the, that's the church. I don't know. Just give me a sec. All right, let me just relax. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? First video in the new year. Perhaps all the obstacles in one video. <laughs> I don't want to complain too much. You just started. Mm. All right. So, found some, found some shelter, at least for camera. Just a little under the roof, on a rooftop here. I don't know. Don't need that for myself, just for camera. Mm. Yeah, all right. Three fires. Yeah. So, those components, the Burley, the Virginia, the Perique, they work together just in a wonderful way. So, I really like the tobacco. There's no, I don't know, there's no sharpness to it. There are no really edges to cut off or something like that. So this is really a nice tobacco. If you really want to complain, uh, we always want to complain. So th there's no tobacco in this world that couldn't even be a bit better. So, well, so this is really a very, round tobacco enough sweetness a little bit of body to it so that's really good tobacco perhaps you could say that is compared to the three nuns tobacco a little lack of character maybe so yeah this could be a good everyday smoke mm, perhaps that's what one guy wrote it may be under complex Maybe that's the key uh, to that, but nevertheless, wonderful tobacco. Mm. Smoking this, by the way, uh, in my black Mercia. So, with a new stem, uh, completely, completely wet now by the rain. So you see that? So, a friend of mine. Uh, he's a he's a fantastic craftsman, and uh, he's not he's not a stem maker or something. Oh, he, he just does it for a hobby. Uh, look at that, two silver pieces. So that's my my black Mercia, and uh, he gave me. A, I said, "Well, Guxel, can't you do another stem for that?" So I don't know. Just what you think is, is that might be the best stem for that, and he did. And it took him quite a while, but I'm really, <laughs> I already pushed him. 
So, um, Gokso, if you see that, thank you so much for that, my friend. This is really a great stamp. Mm. Yeah, anyway, so... If you think about a copy of Three Nuns, uh, you're going to be mistaken uh, to go for the Three Fires. But, as a tobacco for itself, uh, with three components working together in a fine way, this could really be something for you. It's good tobacco. Mm, let me just let me just add the story about the monks here. So here in front of this little smithy, uh, monk smithy, where they used to to do their little iron pieces, what they needed. So well, you know, iron and steel. That was very precious during the Middle Ages. Mm. So, you know, these monks were Benedictines, and yeah, you know, they were they were very successful with their master. I think you can say that. So um, they claimed a lot of uh, territory around over uh, over several centuries, and. So the whole monastery then ended when a new earl came uh, to the Shire. And uh, the story about that is um, the territory belonged to the wealth family. And there is a family, um, yeah, during a period of weakness of the wealth. They claimed this territory uh, for themselves, and after a while, the Welfs came back and took the territory back. And the Earl, he had to, you know, he had to go for a run. <laughs> so, and after a while, he tried to get his territory back, his shire, to buy that back with money. And the Welfs, well, they were always in need of money. So like most of the noble families uh, were in the Middle Ages and in the late Middle Ages especially. So and they gave it back for a lot of money. But where should the new Earl get the money from? And he had an idea. And the idea was to uh, bring in um, the new Reformation protested movement. And by that, getting rid of all the monasteries and taken the property over and that was the idea behind that and that's what ended the time of this monastery not at once but after a while so at first uh, he didn't allow uh, to bring in new friars well and then step by step um, uh, they got the number uh, got smaller and smaller and in the end uh, I think there were just uh, one, one friar left, and when he was gone, all the property uh, belonged to the noble family. And even with all that, they took a lot of uh, land, and property, and income. Uh, so that, that's how they um, did the financing of buying back the Shire. That was the idea behind that. Yeah, and monastery ended finally, uh, I think, uh, in the 19th century. It was then used for agriculture, all the property here. But there's still, still some nice buildings here, and they did several archaeological surveys here on the territory. Uh, interesting surveys here. Uh, going back to, uh, to the Middle Ages. All right. Show you one or two things and I'm gonna hop off. Excuse me. I don't know. That's gonna be a confused video. First video in 2021. <laughs> we have to start somewhere. <laughs> Alright, guys, show you one or two things. So perhaps if that works, I'm gonna show you the church here. So the church goes back to the late Middle Ages here, uh, and you see this this building here. Uh, yeah, 
he was some kind of of, um, of garden at first. So it's some kind of yard. Uh, and the church here nearby. So, but even, so that was a quite huge monastery uh, for this area here. But even then, you see, it doesn't seem too, too huge for us. Let's see if that works. So they opened that up. So we, we can't really go in, but what you might see is that they have a, some kind of second door here. And we might take a look. Uh, so what that looks today. All right, can we do this? Yeah, so you might get an idea. So they worked on that and normally uh, several exhibitions there. Oh no, they should have used a uh, different glass. Something without mirror effect. So, close that again. So, just to show you the other side. Alright guys, so a little closer garden here, garden of the monastery, whatever, and all the spices and everything they need to, I don't know, provide some hospitality and something. I'm pretty sure they had tobacco on that, but anyway, mm, so, alright. Guys, I think that's mainly it. Mm. Damn it. What a day. It's just raining now. <laughs> Hang in, I do. Mm. All right, guys. Let's hope for better videos. Uh, <laughs> and always the end of tobacco in 2021. So, all right. Um, that's mainly it here from the monastery of China. I put a link down in the bucket for the location. And I'll also do a, uh, put a link down in the bucket uh, if you're interested in that. So maybe you're interested uh, in my meeting with the Virtual Pipe Club. So, I don't know, some weeks ago, we had a meeting on the Virtual Pipe Club. They asked me for some kind of interview, and uh, really nice guys, kind guys, really. Um, so, and they're doing a great job, really. Uh, so, the whole idea of, of having that, and just in combination uh, with, I don't know, being together in these times, just even if it's just on Zoom or uh, I think they're, they're also uh, on different other platforms. Um, I don't know. They told me, but sorry, I forgot. So uh, I put a link down the market if you're interested in that in the interview uh, with the Virtual Pipe Club. Yeah, give them a sup. Uh, great guys and, and hang in, guys. Spring will come sooner or later. All right. So take care, guys. Be well. And perhaps see you again. Gotta get out of this rain here.